Why does every guy cheat on you? Trust me, I know. How come girls always call you their friend? I can tell you. We'll talk about your strength and we'll talk about emotions. Secrets of Birthdays, now live for purchase. Check out yours at secretsofbirthdays.com. So Hello and welcome to Soul Horoscopes Orbits Edition. My name is Christopher Rayman Wateki, and I consider myself your soul biographer, a person here to help you put together your karmic story through the orbits of what is above turns out to be what is below. And it's a pleasure to be back on the air. I have to say one of the new little tricks of recording this, uh, this same open for everybody is that I can tack on an open at the very end. My goddess, do we have an intense weekend. A new moon in Aquarius rattled me, put me behind in my schedule, so my apologies for showing up what I consider late with the horoscopes. I want to be on the air, but I didn't feel too bad. It knocked out the Pope as well. <laughs> you know when Neptune's in Pisces, folks, is when the Pope resigns. When the rats start leaving the ship, it's not always because the ship is sinking. Sometimes I think it's because light is brightening up, and we're seeing some effects of that, including even a personal killer, a cop killer in California. A lot of crazy stuff stuff going on. This is Neptune in Pisces. We're going to talk about that in your horoscope. I call it the party in Pisces. But even though we were distracted in Pisces, the sun is really the focus in Aquarius. We're working on how we position ourselves. We'll be going deep into that as well. Plus there are some squares and I've got some new technology to kind of show you along the way. So let's take the ascension elevator up to 33,000 feet and get on our journey. Afternoon folks, this is your captain speaking. While riding the ascension elevator, be sure to keep your hands and feet in at all times. The white zone is for immediate loading and unloading of emotional baggage. And as always, thank you for flying with Christopher Wateki. And here we are up at 33,000 feet for the Sagittarius and Sagittarius Risings and your seven-day mood forecast. So nice to have you. Let's start with what we're doing. We're in Chapter 3 of Sun in Aquarius, and you are working on a rather intense intellectual transit. There's our Mr. Happies. In fact, last week we were working on comparison, the ability to sort out mind games, be objective in ideas. And this week, you're going to find your attitude, your message, and your tone. So you're going to step into your intellectual prowess. But there's also a lot of emotional challenge going on for Sagittarius's and Sag Risings and their own self-nurturing, having faith and being able to respond to your own emotional sensitivity. Let's take a day-by-day, play-by-play. It was like cast day on Sunday. And so there might have been some sort of a challenge with your mind where you had to break through. The moon and sun were calling for you to emotionally surrender to the higher plane when it comes to uh, your mind games or your attitude. So you're being called to a master shui attitude. Uh, then on Tuesday, Mercury rules the, uh, Monday, Mercury rules the day, and the moon shifted into Pisces, so now emotions themselves are needing a little extra TLC as you are working with mind games. On Wednesday, I think you will, uh, Tuesday, you'll find peace in your mind, but the moon will require that you nest and rest and take care of yourself. And if you don't uh, show up for your emotions, you could have anxiety. On Wednesday, Neptune rules the day, and the moon moves into the house of inner child. So your emotions will shift to your inner child, and it will cross Uranus, and you're going to really have to respond to your inner child differently uh, in order to get past it. And Neptune rules the day, so we want to listen to our intuition. Thursday, I think, is sunny and childlike. Saturn rules the day. I think you'll be feeling strong, and the sun will come out, and you'll want to play. On Friday, you'll want to take action on uh, this month's topic, which is mind games. So whatever it takes to eliminate maybe a communication problem, uh, whatever it takes to eliminate a mind game, you want to take action on that uh, on, on that day. On Saturday, you're holding space. The moon has moved, by the way, in Friday and Saturday to your daily reality, so you are hyper aware on both these days. But you're basically holding space for the new attitude, or if you're waiting to hear back from somebody on a message or something, you might be holding space for that too. Uh, and then finally, our final day of the sun in Aquarius, we are challenged. Chiron is ruling the day, so this is a chance to enter into a master healing, but you'll be tested on your faith and tested on what you've learned. So your intellectual faith is tested uh, at the end of the week. So we basically go from breaking through to being tested again. Kind of a challenging week. Now let's take a look at another graphic that I have uh, that I have started to develop that kind of animates uh, the charts day by day so you can kind of understand it. These two green arrows are showing the trine that's going on between you trying to draw boundaries of inner faith and how those boundaries of inner faith pour directly into 
your emotional well-being or not well-being. So you have to face the weeds in your soul garden before you're going to feel good on earth. These two red uh, arrows are pointing out a square, which means fears between your emotions uh, and relationships. Okay, so emotions and relationships, long-term relationships, your mirage, you know, you are having doubts or having uh, fear issues with, can I take care or show up for me? Then the moon is crossing all the vulnerable areas. That's what this green arrow is showing. You can see it here at the top. It's uh, your emotional state of well-being, your inner child issues, your daily reality and health and lifestyle, and then it heads for relationships on Sunday. Here you can see that uh, the planets move. They're all animated. These are printouts from astro.com. So thank you to astro.com for always being such a good service to the world. Here you can see the moon crossing these sensitive spots, crossing your inner child, cro stays in your inner child, goes to your house of health and lifestyle, and then heads for relationship expansion next Monday. And then finally, this is the square between uh, your soul capital, self-esteem, and inner child. There's a, you know, working out fears of, will I get what I want? Can my inner child have what it wants? Will I make enough money to get what I want? Working out the fears between heart's desire uh, and literal soul capital or manifestation of money. All right. Uh, so the next thing I want to take of it is in outer space. So um, the first thing I want to show is this party in Pisces because this party in Pisces is what's going on right now. Uh, in your emotional house, your house of home, family, and foundation. We've got psychic energy I sense. We've got Mars putting aggressive masculine energy on your emotional well-being. We've got Chiron there, IB, and IB is really the healing planet, and it's there trying to help you heal your emotions and heal your childhood. And then you have your mind actually focused on your childhood and on your emotions, even though right now you're in an intellectual transit. So, and then the moon comes rushing through here on uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. All right, so Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday is the moon rushing through this emotional sensitive spot. Mercury is going to retrograde through this spot, so the universe is really making Sagittarius and Sag Risings uh, figure out exactly what is emotionally upsetting them and how to get to your own uh, self-nurturing. Neptune is there to help you be, to you know, your intuition to help you. Let's look at the important orbits. Um, I'm just focusing the space on Pisces this, this week instead of all 12 states and a manifestation. I thought that was a bit much maybe. Uh, but Neptune is at step two, which when it comes to just listen to your emotions. Your emotions are going to be rich with psychic truths, but you need to listen and get used to listening to this so you're starting to feel psychically aware. Uh, Chiron, the healing is you want to be decisive about what healing, what spiritual healing you want to have. So I want to clean up this stuff with my mother. I want to clean up this stuff with my father. I want to clean up these you know, daddy issues or my inability to respond to myself or all this stuff. You just be clear and decisive. Then looking at four other uh, orbits, um, I've stacked this with Mars, uh, Mercury, the Sun, and the Moon. So uh, you can stack up and see. Now, I think Tuesday is an interesting day uh, because you want to make, you basically, you want to be decisive on Tuesday about the actions you're going to take for yourself. Be clear about where you're going to decide to act. You don't actually act on it till Thursday, Valentine's Day, but you decide to act on Tuesday and your mind needs to be step 11, I love me, I love you, if you just follow down the screen thing here. And then this is the Venus rule day, so when it comes to uh, mind games, you are in step six, you're returning to balance and order, giving and receiving, just staying open, breathing with the universe, right? Then on Valentine's Day, actually you're set up for a decent Valentine's Day, uh, Mars is in step nine, so you wanna act on things that make you feel good. Act on self-compassion. So take some action on Valentine's Day for self-compassion. And then your mind wants to just be open with unlimited possibility, okay, which is what you do best. I love me and I am open. And that's how you get through it. And that's what helps you get the decision about your mind game and your attitude, I think, of these other two steps. That's why I want to show this step astrology. Uh, on Saturday, when you're just holding space, just your actions, you want to, Mars is saying, take actions on loving yourself, take actions on loving others, but only if you have the energy. And then on the day we are tested, uh, your mind is at step 17. So you want to love, your mind wants to be, you basically just want to have loving thoughts and keep your intuition open. And the moon is in Taurus, so you're very hyper aware on this day. On this day that your mind is tested on its old games, you're hyper aware. And that's why Mr. Happy down there is not so happy. All right. So I just want to sum up really quickly. Um, and I'm learning how to use my own chart here. I do this in every video where I try, at the end I'm so in my head, I can't figure out which one turns it off. All right. So in the end, um, I want to be clear on the different spots for Sagittarius Risings, just to keep it clean. Uh, Ultimately, this is, a, this is a test of week of emotions and how well you respond to your own emotional well-being. 
You won't be able to respond to your emotional well-being unless you've already faced your weeds and drawn boundaries in your subconscious about what it is that you're going to, you know, what fears you're going to face and, and where you've decided to have faith. So you have to have that faith in place for you to work, do the emotional well-being work. Now, technically, this trans is about your mental attitude. So you're being very much tested on emotional well-being at the end of a mental attitude transit. And so, you know, the test of the mind is to be there for the emotions, okay? There are fears between you and relationships that will work out. There are fears between uh, your inner child getting what it wants and you having the confidence to do it. Just face those fears one by one as they come up with self-compassion and love and really be there for your own emotional well-being this week, okay? Be the best mommy you've ever had. All right, let's wrap up. This week, my gratitude goes to you, the viewer. I just want to say thank you for always reaching out, for always looking for me when I've been off the air, for continuing to give me great positive feedback and uh, allowing me to grow and be honest on the air and not have to pretend to be somebody else. I'm very grateful to be in this service. And if you watch my horoscope, Taurus, you'll see that I'm finding my place in the world. And, um, and it's so nice to be received uh, by you. So thank you. Uh, much gratitude to you. This is co-creation in, uh, in the making right here live. Uh, don't forget, if you'd like to connect to me personally, I do go on the air live uh, in a Google Hangout called A Guided Hangout on Mondays at 12 noon Pacific. So we put that post on my Facebook, in the mothership, everywhere. So come on down. You can watch. You can chat. And you can ask me questions personally. This is my way of getting, uh, and I'd love to hear your feedback on the horoscopes and what you think so far. If you want to be watched over personally by me, I write text messages every day through the night personally to my subscribers and you can start it for one week for a penny so come on down if you want at gatex.me and try the ga service uh, with us thank you so much for logging in i'll see you on sunday if everything goes well but if you look the horoscope it will and until then live love be <laughs>